Once you get root on a box in a CTF like Hack the Box, the chance to learn is only halfway there done. There is so much you can do to explore and understand how the box is set up, what technologies are in use. Um, so anytime I see something that I'm not super familiar with, like in this case, a Ruby web server, I love to just dive in and play with it and try to get a feel for what's going on. Um, I'm going to do that in this web in this uh, video. It's going to be kind of a beginner focused video, but uh, again, just I'm trying to highlight like what you can do when you have a box. So we're going to look at the Ruby web server as well as uh, try to figure out why it wouldn't load localhost and give me a PDF of that page. So um, with that, let's go ahead and jump in. All right, let's take a look at our situation here. We've got a super simple web page here. It's a convert a web page to a PDF, enter our URL to fetch. Uh, it's got a bar here and a submit. Uh, I've got I've got this set up. I always have my stuff going through Burp, uh, at least by filters. Anything hack the box related goes to Burp. I've got a video on how I set that up. I'll try to include a link here. Um, I've also got a root shell in the box. Uh, we've already rooted the box, but this is a beyond root video. So we're looking at how things are configured and how things are set up. Um, and then I've got a web server over here and an empty directory we can look at. Uh, and of course, I've got Burp Suite here. Um, if we come back to the web server, if I try to put in, you know, uh, HTTP, 10, 10, 14, 6, and I submit, I get the request there, and then I get back a PDF of my web page. That's what it looks like. Um, we could check that out by just going, you know, if we did 10, 10, 14, 6, that's exactly what that looks like. So um, that's the website, and it seems to be working. Um, there's a little bit of weirdness. If I put in, uh, if I put in like uh, localhost here and try to get that, it hangs for a few seconds, and then it never comes back. I get the same behavior with precious.hack the box. If I just put precious there, kind of like localhost, because I think that might be in the host file, um, none of that works out. Um, eventually it says cannot load remote URL. Um, I can also do things like if I try to do things like file at the password, you can see I tried that already, uh, it's going to say it's not a valid URL. So um, that's not the way. Now we find a way to, pro there's a bug in the PDF library and that's how we get command execution. Um, so that's not, super, that's not what this video is about though. Um, let's come back here and start thinking about, okay, so how is this set up? Um, let's look, if we look in burp, We'll see right away um, the server, and Nmap would call this out for us as well. The server is Nginx 118, um, and it's also Fusion Passenger. That's not a software I was familiar with, but in looking at it, it's clear it is a um, kind of the way um, PHP, the binary PHP, can be plugged into Nginx and then run. So you, when you proxy things through um, this PHP plugin module, that it then runs it with PHP. Um, this is kind of the same thing for Ruby. So it allows me to run a Ruby application from PHP. Um, not sure that's the best explanation, but we'll go with it for now. Um, and then, so if we come over here, we can say like, we can guess how, how is Nginx running? It's probably running as a service. We can always check that by running uh, service Nginx uh, status. And it, it prints a bunch of stuff. So we did find the service. Um, and we can see it's active and running. We can see various things going on here. Um, it looks like I've got a shell on the box somewhere else already because you can see me, my stuff in here. Um, we can also, uh, if we didn't know the name of the service, we didn't know it was going to be named Nginx, we could come into here, into uh, into the SC system D directory. And if we do like a grep recursively for uh, Nginx, in fact, let's do recursive and case insensitive uh, here. We can find uh, here's the system multi th this nginx.service file right here is where we define the service. And so we can see uh, this service is running. Here's some units. Let's see, so we're going to run nginx um, as a daemon, master process on um, nginx. So we should, we, get, we should check out nginx. So we can go into etsy nginx. And uh, from there, we're going to see, let's see, because a bunch of different config files in here. Um, the things we really tend to care about, the first place I always go is sites enabled. And in sites enabled, we're going to get any file in here is going to be po able to configure a site. So there's only one here. Again, super simple app. We can take a look at it. Uh, we got some log file defined. Um, and we have two servers. The first server is listening on 80. It's got no um, server name defined. So it's going to kind of be the default server. And it basically says if the remote address, the thing it's the thing I'm trying to that the user is trying to get to is not equal to precious.hack the box reroute to press the hack the box. And we can see that if we come here and we try to go to 10, 10, 11 dot, I believe it's 189, 189, Let's see if that works. And we get a, we end up at pressures.hack the box. Uh, we can come over here and we can see, here's our initial request and we get a 302 redirect back saying, you know, come here, here's the location, pressures.hack the box. Now down here we have server name, pressures.hack the box. 
Uh, we get the web roots, the files there. Um, if we, well, and then we can see passenger enabled is on, uh, passenger environment variable production. Um, we're going to add this Ruby header here. Um, we can look into some documentation. I'll put this link in the, the video notes. Um, this talks about how to set up a passenger application and how you're supposed to put, you know, here's your, here's your server des description right here. Um, see the path to app slash public is where they're putting it. And so they're doing the same thing here. Um, so that's a pretty good feel for where the files we care about are going to be living. Um, we can copy this. Oh, actually, before I go there, I just will say there is a thing, um, modules in, uh, and again, you can have the modules enabled. And then here, there's a handful of these things, um, but you can see right there is passenger.conf. And so you can see uh, 50 mod HTTP passenger.conf. And that just says like load this binary library into Apache or not Apache, Nginx when it starts. So that's what's handling that. Um, so now we can go to var www PDF app. And here is our PDF app. Um, I'm not a Ruby expert. I think Ruby, I think I find Ruby so unintuitive, but um, gem file and gem file .lock, these are going to describe the libraries in use by the app. Um, PDF. So if we look in there, I don't know if it's actually there or not, but um, yeah, so these are the PDFs that get generated by the site, and that's just a place to store them. Um, we can look at public real quick, and that's just images and style sheets. In fact, if we do find on public, I think there's like one file in here. Um, oh, there's a handful of folders, but really it's just this image style sheet. Um, so that's not super interesting. Um, let's look at the config. Uh, config, oops, config.ru for Ruby. So we're going to read in, we're going to also load config environment, and we're going to run PDF controllers. Um, let's take a look at the config environment real quick. We'll come back to PDF controllers. And so here we can see we're just, we're going to require bundler. We're doing some other stuff, we're requiring things, and then we're making sure we have this app directory. So that's, we're going to want to look there. Um, think, look at this PDF controllers. If we do like a grep minus R on that through this directory, we can see it comes, it's in the config file, but it's also in this app controllers pdf.rb class. Um, so we're going to get there too. So let's go into app. In there we have controller and views. Um, views is pretty simple actually. If we go to views, there's only one file there and it's this index page and it's basically what we saw on that page. Um, the one kind of variable here is this, this templating language here. So we're using a angle brackets with a percent sign to make these uh, make this into template. So Ruby's going to kind of load this template and then look to put the message variable in here. Um, but otherwise, nothing too interesting there. Uh, if we go into controllers, we have one file, nice and simple. Uh, let's go up to the top here. So you can see this class is PDF controller. So this is the thing that gets invoked by this application. Cool. Um, and now we have, uh, if it's a slash, we're just going to, I don't know exactly what ERB means, but we're going to return index. So maybe we're going to get that index template and return it. Um, if it's a post, we're going to, uh, first we're going to check and make sure that the URL parameter, so we're going to get this parameter from the post request. And if that URL parameter is, it starts with HTTP and optional, question mark makes optional, so optional S colon slash slash, um, then that tells us basically, that's, that's why I couldn't do a file git, right? That's why I have to do um, HTTP or HTTPS. Um, we're going to generate a file name, which is a random 36 characters. Um, we're going to use the PDF kit on the URL to a file at this path, which is now in the PDF directory. We saw that as well. Um, we're going to, in exif tool, we're actually going to add in the fact this was generated by PDF kit. Um, and then uh, we're going to send the file back. And then otherwise, we're if rescue. So I guess if we run it, that's kind of like an exception block. We're going to set the message and, and fail here. Um, same thing here if we if we get a non-valid URL. Um, so that's kind of cool. So why couldn't I load the local page? Um, it's not, it's clearly not, the, this page is not doing any kind of fix. And so anytime I see a hang like that, uh, I start to think about DNS issues. Um, let's get out of here. Um, so what happens if we try to curl uh, local host? We get a 302 found. And what exactly is that 302 found doing? We can do a um, dash V here. Uh, we're getting a 302 to precious. So unsurprisingly, we're trying to hit something without the precious uh, host name. And so we're getting redirected to precious. Cool. So what if we try to do that? So if we do curl precious, I can never spell this stuff. The box. And we're still hanging. Um, and why are we hanging? Um, 
Well, if we think of what happens when you make a web request, the first thing the curl has to do is go and say, well, what is precious.hackerbox? How do I access it? Um, and boom, here we go. It's trying to resolve the host and it can't. There's no DNS server here. Um, Hack the Box doesn't today have DNS servers in the labs. And so it's it, if it's not in the host file, then it's not going to define it. And we can check that out. Um, and we can see in the host file, we define precious and localhost. So what if we do a um, curl on HTTP precious? Like, should that work? If I can spell it, A-C-I-O-U-S. Well, it doesn't hang, but it gives me the same redirect because the, the host, you know, when curl does this, first it uses this to resolve the IP it's going to try to connect to, and then it creates the host header, which is going to be set to this. And, and again, that host isn't precious.htb, so it redirects. Um, so can we fix this? Let's come in here. And vim is not here. I'm going to, for the sake of my sanity, uh, vim equals vim.tiny. I think that'll work. Yeah, sweet. Okay, so here we go. Uh, if we come down here and say localhost, and we also make this precious dot hack the box, and we close that. Now, when I run curl against this, it's going to uh, first check the host file. It's going to get it, and it's going to return the page, um, which means now, even from not on the box, if I come back here and I put in HTTP precious.htb, and I do it, it's thinking for a second, and there we go. I get, I get a PDF version of the website. So um, I kind of wish that uh, Hack the Box had caught this in testing and just added this little case. I mean, it's not, use, not necessary for the exploitation, but it would have been kind of a cool Easter egg to be able to load itself. But uh, yeah, um, just a, this, this video, really, the point was just to say, when you get root on a box, you, you have so much you can explore and learn and you can play with and you can change things. And if you're in a shared lab, like be polite and con considerate of other people, but you can go in and tweak, you can add something to the host file and see if you, if you think it's DNS having a problem, go try to fix it and see what happens. Um, you think you can make this, this box not vulnerable, not really good to this case, because that's just patched this library. But you know, if you see the logic error in the box, well, go see if you can fix it and then try to exploit it again and see if it is there. Um, there's so much you can do to keep learning and growing your understandings once you finish a box. So uh, I will step off my soapbox with that. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video and uh, thanks. I'll talk to you next time.